Oh no, not another tips video. But wait, before you click off, this one you're gonna wanna see. Stay tuned. So, I collect a lot of little tips and tricks all of the time. And whenever I find a good one, I think I should make a video on it. But typically, it turns out not being long enough to make a full video on. So, typically, I just file it away, and sometimes I even forget about them. So, what I decided to do is start compiling these tips, and when I get enough of them, I'll just make a video on a bunch of tips. So, that's what we're doing today. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be, because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now, this definitely isn't the first Windows Tips video I've done. I've actually done quite a few. Typically, I put together tips when I run out of ideas for other videos. Unfortunately, that creates kind of a problem. Normally, my workflow is to scour the internet looking for tips and tricks and then compiling the ones that I like into a video. However, I end up finding more tips than I can typically fit into one video, so I break them into two parts. Ultimately though, the majority of these tips end up being recycled, but I always try to throw in a few new ones in each video. But even then, these tip videos seem to not get many views, because why would they if they're just mostly recycled tips that a hundred other YouTube channels have covered in the past? So, I'm going to start doing these videos a little bit differently. From now on, these tip videos are going to be new and cool tips that I find and I'm not going to break them into two parts anymore. Because while well, part one usually doesn't get many views, part two really doesn't get many views. Now, that doesn't mean that all of my tips are going to be new to everyone that's watching. Some of my viewers are pretty knowledgeable and I'm sure a few of these tips you know about but I'm gonna do my best to come up with a few that you don't so let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what I have found lately and stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a bonus tip for you that you're not gonna want to miss so this video is gonna be in Windows 11 but most of these tips should work in both Windows 10 and 11 when they don't I'll go ahead and mention that so the first one that we're going to do is kind of an annoying one that I found while writing this video, literally. But if you click your right click button and you go to new, as you can see, text document happens to be one of the things that you can create as a new document. However, if you've just installed Windows 11 23H2, you might notice that a lot of these are missing, especially the text document one. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fix that because I had to fix it before I even started writing this video. So it's relatively easy to do what you got to do is go ahead and click on the start button click on settings then from settings you want to go to apps and then from apps you want to go to installed apps and then from here you want to search in the top box right here for notepad and then once you find it you want to click on these three little dots right in the side right here and you want to go to advanced options and then from advanced options you want to scroll down right here where it says reset you click on reset and it's going to ask you if you want to permanently delete the app's data on this device including preferences and sign in details go ahead and hit reset and it'll reset the app for you and at that point you should be able to close settings come here and go here to new and then text document should be right there and now the next one i want to show you this one i actually found in windows 10 and this one everyone may already know about and if you do then awesome however i didn't and when i noticed this i kind of blew my mind so if you click on your start button and in windows 11 you have to click all apps but in windows 10 you can just go to your app section in the start menu and as you'll notice everything's in alphabetical order and it's indicated by the letter starting with whatever application you have. Well, have you ever actually clicked on one of these letters before? Because if you do, 
it gives you the entire alphabet and you can jump to a specific letter. So if you want, you can jump down to R and it goes all the way down to R in the menu. If you click again, you can go back up to C and you can jump back up to C. Now, this one right here might be super basic, but I have found that it's extremely helpful, especially when you're working on a computer that has tons of applications installed. And I found it by accident and it's probably a really old feature that everyone knows about, but I guess I'm the last one to find out. But if you didn't know about it, let me know in the comments below because I was kind of blown away by it. Okay, so the next one, now this one here is a recycled tip. I just wanna warn you ahead of time. However, I think this one is pretty huge. So essentially what you're gonna do is if you right click here and you hit your task manager, a lot of people have problems with high disk usage. Now, normally this is associated with a computer that has a spinning disk, but it can happen also on a system that has an SSD drive. And in my case, I tend to have this happen quite a bit, especially on a system that's been set up, not just a test system like the one that we're in right now. And if I have a lot of documents on that system, I will tend to have high disk usage. And most of the time, this disk usage is caused by Windows Defender. Let me show you how to stop that from happening. What you're gonna do is go ahead and open up your task scheduler. And then from task scheduler, you wanna go to the task scheduler library here go into Microsoft, and then go into Windows. And then go ahead and scroll all the way down until you find the Windows Defender right here. And you're gonna have four different processes or tasks that are set up to run essentially whenever Windows Defender decides it needs to run them. So what I recommend doing is go ahead and go through each one of these right here and go over to the Conditions tab. And then check Start the Task only if the computer is at idle and then you can set it for a specific time. I typically leave it default. So if you check this one right here and go ahead and hit OK and then follow through and do this for all of the different tasks that you have in here. So it's going to be all four different tasks. Go into condition, start only there and then click condition, start only when computer's idle and do this for all four. And it should stop Windows Defender from having high disk usage when you're trying to do other things with your system. Now, this one here, essentially what it's going to do is it's going to limit Windows Defender into doing its normal maintenance and routine scans and things of that nature while the computer is at idle. Now, I don't know why this isn't a completely default setting, but for some reason, Microsoft decided to let Windows Defender take control of a computer and increase its disk usage in times that you really don't want that to happen. However, one thing that I have noticed and the reason why I wanted to put this tip in this video is because I wanted to add this little detail is that I've noticed that Windows Update will change these task preferences in the, in the future. So the next time you run a Windows Update, you may have to go into the Windows Defender tasks and change the conditions again on them. So go ahead and keep an eye on that. If you're having high disk usage, then this might be the reason. Okay, so the next one I want to show you here, this one, I think this is a huge tip. At least this is something that has annoyed me for a long time, and I didn't realize there was a way to get around it. So go ahead and right click on your taskbar, go to task manager. And from task manager, you'll notice that in your processes tab right here, or the very first tab, you'll scroll down, you'll see all the different processes that are running on the system. Now, as long as you have it in alphabetical order, they stay for the most part pretty organized so you can find what you're looking for. However, let's say you're looking for something that's using the CPU or memory or disk or whatever, right? When you click on that, you'll notice that it will start to jump around a lot. And in some cases, obviously right now, I've only got 8% CPU usage, just not really jumping around a lot. And OBS Studio is using the most because I'm recording this video right now. However, in some cases, you might have this thing jumping around a whole bunch. And if you're trying to find a specific task or you're trying to click on something and it keeps jumping around, it can kind of be annoying. So what you can do is push the control button and it will pause the task manager so it doesn't jump around anymore. As you can see, it's completely stationary now. And at this point we can scroll through and we can look through the entire list without it moving. And as soon as I let off on the control button, it starts to jump again. And then to pause it, you just hit the control button again and it pauses it again. I think this is a pretty helpful tip for someone that wants to dig through their task manager and find out what's using up CPU memory or disk usage. Okay, so the next tip, we're gonna go ahead and close task manager. And this one here is honestly just a time kill, but have you ever wanted to try chat GPT? Well, there's an easy way to do it within Windows 11, and this works in Windows 10 as well. All you do is you see this little icon that you have in your normal search box. All you gotta do is click on it and it'll open up 
your search box right here. And then all you have to do is go over to this little Bing icon right here, and that should open up Bing Chat. And then in Bing Chat, it essentially gives you Chat GPT, and you can ask it questions whenever you want. So let's ask it a question and see what it has to say. So are, are you going to take over the world? All right, let's see what it says. So no, I'm not going to take over the world. I'm just here to help you with your search needs. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye. I don't know about you, but I don't believe it. I don't know if we should trust it, but if you want to play with it, that's how you can do it. Okay, so I showed you that tip in order to show you this one. So we're going to go ahead and close Edge now. And let's say you don't want to deal with any of this stuff. So you click on your search bar, or if you click on your start menu and you search for something, like we're going to search for a cyber CPU, it'll obviously do a web search in your start menu. And that's, that can sometimes close your, slow your start menu down. So let's disable all web searching completely from the start menu and the search menu. And to do that, it's relatively easy. All you do is go ahead and open regedit. And when, with regedit open, you're gonna go to your current user right here. Then you're gonna go down to software. And then from software, we're gonna go into policies right here. And then from policies, we're gonna go into Microsoft. And then we're gonna go into Windows. And now from this point right here, we're gonna have to create a key because the key we want isn't here yet. It might be on yours, but it wasn't on mine. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna hit new key. And then for that key, we're gonna name it Explorer. And then under Explorer, we want to go ahead and make a new DWORD 32-bit value. So we're going to go ahead and right-click, hit new DWORD 32-bit. And then for the name on this one, we're going to call it Disable Search Box Suggestions. And then from that point, you're going to go ahead and open that one, and you're going to change the value to 1. And then go ahead and hit Enter. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and close this right here. And as you can see, everything has essentially still remained the same. But if you right-click, go to your Task Manager, scroll down in your Task Manager until you find your File Explorer. So it's probably going to be fairly close to the bottom right here, right there, Windows Explorer. And we're going to hit Restart Task. And that's going to essentially restart your desktop. And as you'll notice, once you get back, that little icon is gone. And if you try to search for something on the Start menu, like we'll search for Cyber CPU again, it has no results. So this will disable search from the Start menu and from the search box from within Windows. But it'll also restrict your access to ChatGPT4, like I showed you in the last tip. So if you like the last tip, don't do this one because you won't be able to use the last one. In fact, that's the reason why I put them in this order in the video. <laughs> Let's get back to it. Okay, so for the next tip, this one right here is probably one that's been around for a while and I'm pretty sure that it works in both Windows 10 and Windows 11. But you click on your start menu and say you have any application that you want to have a shortcut to. All you have to do is take that application and put it down in your taskbar. From Windows 11, you can't do it from your pinned icons. You have to do it from all apps. You go to all apps, we're gonna take calculator, we're gonna drag it down, and we're gonna put it on our taskbar down here. So from there, all you have to do, you'll notice the order in which these icons are set up. So we've got Chrome first, the calculator second, and File Explorer third, and then Edge fourth. So all you have to do on this tip is hold down the window key, and then press the number corresponding with the order of applications here. So if I hit Windows one, it's gonna open up Chrome. If I hit Windows two, it's gonna open Calculator, and then Windows 3 is gonna open up File Explorer, and etc. So if you ever want a really quick keyboard shortcut in order to open a specific application, just put it down in the task menu and use Windows plus the number key to open the app. Okay, so this next tip is gonna be more of a privacy tip, but this is one I highly recommend you guys do. So if you click on the Start button, go ahead and click on Settings. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to privacy and security right here. And then from privacy and security, you wanna to go to activity history right here. So as you'll notice on mine, it stores activity history, but it does not send it to Microsoft because it's checked off right here. However, what I recommend you doing is checking both of these off. There's no reason why your computer should store your activity history, and it's kind of a privacy issue. Also, if you want, you can clear the activity history by clicking this button right here, and it'll clear all your history. Now, I promised you a bonus tip. 
And that's what we're going to do next. Now for this one, you're going to need a USB thumb drive. And in reality, this tip is more like just more informational than anything else. However, in Windows 11, you don't have to do anything. This is already active. But in Windows 10, I'll show you how to activate it. And that's essentially disabling write caching to your USB drive that allows you just to pull your USB drive out without ejecting it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you plug your USB drive in, do whatever it is that you want to do with your USB drive, a lot of people will say, well, you have to eject it first. You can't just rip it out of the computer. Well, in Windows 11, you sure can. You can just take it out of the computer without worrying about anything because USB drives automatically have disk caching turned off. But in Windows 10, they don't. So let me show you how to turn it off in Windows 10 so you can take advantage of the same benefit. So to do that, go ahead and plug your USB drive in. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have to do this for every USB drive. It's not an automatic setting that you can do to all USB drives, unfortunately. Now there might be a way to do that, and if there is, go ahead and mention it down in the comments below. But this is how I figured out how to do it. Go ahead and click on your Windows Explorer, go to your computer itself until you can see your USB drive. And then you're gonna to wanna to right click, and you're gonna to wanna to go down to Properties. And then in properties, you want to go ahead and click on the hardware tab. And from the hardware tab, you want to select the drive that you're wanting to change the properties to. So in this one, obviously, we don't want my solid state disk. We want to go ahead and do the USB device right here. And that should be the one that's highlighted by default. So once you get to that, you go ahead and highlight that and you click the properties button down here and it will open up another properties menu. And then for this, you're going to want to click on the button that says change settings. And then once you do that, you'll notice that you have a new tab up here, one called Policies. And then when you click on that, obviously, I have Quick Removal enabled. But in Windows 10, it's going to look more like this. It's going to have, you're, you're essentially not going to have the removal policy at all. It's going to be completely gone. All you're going to have is this write caching policy right here. And it's going to be enabled. So what you want to do in Windows 10 is just uncheck this box right here. And you should be able to pull out your USB drives whenever you want, at least the one USB drive that you're working with. You're gonna to have to repeat this process on every drive that you wanna do this with. Or in Windows 11, just make sure it says quick removal and that's all you have to worry about. Then you can go ahead and hit okay and the settings should be applied automatically. So hopefully there were some tips in there that you guys didn't know about. Make sure to mention in the comments below what was your favorite tip from this video. Also, let me know if you like the new idea that I have for the format of these tip videos. Because I always want to make videos that get views because if they don't, then that means you guys don't really care about the subject. And I obviously want to make videos that you guys want to watch. Because otherwise, what point is there making a video if no one wants to watch it? But with that said, if you want some more Windows 11 tips, then check out this video where I show you how to make Windows 11 just a little bit better. Actually, it'll make it a lot better. As always, you guys have a great day.